Generally, there is some confusion regarding the difference between apexogenesis and apexification. So, in this video, we will discuss both these concepts together and by the end, your doubts should be cleared. Let's start with apexogenesis. The most important point to remember here is that apexogenesis comes under vital pulp therapy. It is defined as the treatment of a vital pulp by capping or pulpotomy so that continued growth of the root can happen and eventually closure of the open apex. The logic behind this is that if the radicular pulp is healthy in an immature tooth, then the root growth will happen normally. Let's see the indications for apexogenesis. It is performed for a traumatized or pulpally involved vital permanent tooth when the root apex is incompletely formed. There should be no history of spontaneous pain, no sensitivity on percussion, the bleeding from the pulp should be controllable and the tooth should appear normal on the radiograph. The contraindications for apexogenesis are evidence that radicular pulp has undergone degenerative changes, pus discharge from the tooth, a history of prolonged pain, necrotic debris in canal and visible periapical radiolucency on the radiograph. Now, let's see how the procedure is done. The steps are similar to a pulpotomy. The first step is proper isolation and application of local anesthesia. Then, all the carious tooth structure is removed and access to the pulp chamber is made. The coronal pulp is removed with the use of excavators and we should make sure that we do not damage the radicular pulp during this step. Then, we place a moist cotton pellet over the pulp stumps to control bleeding. After this, we place a calcium hydroxide dressing over the remaining pulp and give a temporary restoration. The patient is kept on follow-up to check for completion of root development and apex closure. Once apex closure is seen, then the tooth goes for a conventional RCT. Moving on, let's discuss apexification. According to Cohen, it is defined as a method to induce development of the root apex of an immature pulpless tooth by formation of osteocementum or bone-like tissue. So now, the biggest difference between apexogenesis and apexification will be that apexogenesis is a form of vital pulp therapy, whereas apexification comes under non-vital pulp therapy. The basic objective of apexification is to induce either closure of open apical third of root canal or the formation of an apical calcific barrier against which obturation can be achieved. To put it in simple words, apexification is indicated for immature permanent teeth that are non-vital with incompletely formed roots. The most common materials used for apexification are calcium hydroxide and MTA. The procedure consists of isolation, removal of carious tooth structure, access opening, removal of debris and necrotic pulp from the canal, and irrigation. Once the working length is determined and the canal is tried, we can place calcium hydroxide 2 mm short of the apex. Then, a temporary restoration is given. After 6 months, the patient is recalled for a follow-up. If there is evidence of root development being complete, then the tooth is re-entered and conventional RCT is done. Now, how do we judge if apexification is complete? Frank gave a list of conditions for apexification to be complete, called Frank's criteria. According to him, apexification is complete if apex is closed through minimum recession of the canal, or if apex is closed with no change in root space, or if there is a radiographically apparent calcific bridge at the apex. Also, even if there is no radiographic evidence of apical closure, but upon clinical instrumentation there is a definite stop at the apex, this indicates calcific repair, which means that apexification has taken place. Alright, that's it for this video. To recap, apexogenesis comes under vital pulp therapy. It is defined as the treatment of a vital pulp by capping or pulpotomy so that continued growth of the root can happen and eventually closure of the open apex. The contraindications for apexogenesis are evidence that radicular pulp has undergone degenerative changes, pus discharge from the tooth, a history of prolonged pain, necrotic debris in canal and visible periapical radiolucency on the radiograph. Apexification is defined as a method to induce development of the root apex of an immature pulpless tooth by formation of osteocementum or bone-like tissue. So now, the biggest difference between apexogenesis and apexification will be that apexogenesis is a form of vital pulp therapy, whereas apexification comes under non-vital pulp therapy. 
The basic objective of apexification is to induce either closure of the open apical third of root canal or the formation of an apical calcific barrier against which obturation can be achieved. To put it in simple words, apexification is indicated for immature permanent teeth that are non-vital with incompletely formed roots.